Hello, residents of Meeple Town. Today we're going to be talking about Root, a game of woodland might and right. And this is a game where you are going to be taking control of a faction and vying for control of clearings to get lots of points, to be the first one to 30, or to gain dominance, to be the winner. John, why are we playing Root today? <laughs> We're recording a video from Maple Town. No, we're playing Root today because back in December, uh, this was a game that I hadn't played yet, and it was we did a wish list on our podcast, our top five games that we wish that we could play because it was Christmas. This was number one. I wanted to play this so bad, and this guy here, he poo pooed on it. He was kind of like, eh, I don't know, like maybe we could play. <laughs> It didn't appeal to me. Maybe it was the hype or something. I don't know. Maybe my mind has changed since then. Maybe we made a convert. We will see. <laughs> so today, when we, as we do our review, what we're going to actually do is play through two rounds. And after we play a round, we'll talk a little bit about the game. And we'll play through another round and, and kind of do our review while that's going on. And then we'll end with our final thoughts and our rating. So... I think we should just jump in. Play this Dive game. Into the hey, All one more right. thing before we start. If you like our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Yes. And if you want to know when we have videos coming out, hit the little bell, and that will tell you when we have something coming out. Join Meeple Town. Yes. We love people joining Meeple Town. It's amazing. One of us. One of us. Something. Root. Root. All right. So I'm going to be, my guys are kind of messy over here. I apologize. I'm going to be Marquita Cat and the Vagabond. So we'll both be playing um, two different ones so that you can see what all the factions look like. So on Marquita Cat's first move, by the way, you're going to notice that these boards are really nice and they really spell out how every faction is played. So that's really cool because there's a lot going on because all these factions play totally differently. Yes. Um, and so which makes the game cool, but also makes it a little difficult to teach, I think, because you've got to teach them kind of the overarching rules here and then how the factions work. But they did do a, a very good job of spelling out you do this and you do this and you do that so i'll walk us through marquita cat and how they play and then we'll do that for all these factions um so the first phase is called bird song and i take wood and place that at any sawmill that i have so here's my one sawmill that i have and you'll also notice that marquita cat pretty much starts out dominating the forest and then you've got people like the irie dynasty and the woodland alliance and the vagabond they're going to do some different things or even try to overthrow maybe not the vagabond but overthrow a marquita cat all right so i've got that going on here I placed my wood, then I'm going to craft if I'm able to craft. And the way that I craft is if I have a workshop on a clearing um, that I have a crafting thing that matches and I do not yet, maybe I'll get one later in the game. Um, so I cannot craft at this point. So let me move on to choosing up to three actions here. Uh, the first thing I am going to choose to do is to build. I have one wood, I can take that down here, and then here's the cost of my buildings. I'm gonna build another sawmill, I believe, so that I can get that saw production going up, get the mill production going up. It also gives me a victory point. So that's one of the main ways, pretty much the main way Marquita Cat scores victory points. You can get victory points through crafting items, you can get them through taking other people's tokens down in battle and things like that, um, but this is kind of their jam. Yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that, that's one move, and then I'm going to recruit, and recruit means wherever I have this little handshake icon, building, whatever, I'm going to um, get to put another worker there, or warrior there. And then lastly, I'm going to mar march, and that allows me with Marquita Cat actually to march two times. And I can take any number of guys from one clearing to the, no to the next if I rule the clearing that I'm in, or I rule the clearing that I'm going to. And so here, I'm gonna put a warrior here, I'm also going to put one over here because I'm going to try to fortify. Yes, so I don't want you to take me down. Yikes. He's going to. I know it. So yeah, I'm I, I, I'm done with that. Uh, I do get a card, so I will draw a card. So go for it. All right. So Dean. I will be. My first faction is going to be the Irie Dynasty, which are these birds, and they, like we said earlier, work much different than the Marquis de Cat. They're going to be placing cards into their decree and then every round taking pre-programmed actions. So you start off with a leader and this leader tells you where you're going to put these first two cards. The first one is going to go in the move spot and then the second one in the battle. Then the first part of my turn, I'm going to be placing a card into the decree and so one or two cards. So I will first place a yellow bunny 
into the recruit slot. A yellow bunny. <laughs> and I will, that means I'm going to have to recruit in, in a yellow bunny clearing that has a roost and I'm gonna have to do that and I'll explain why I have to do that in just a minute. So this turn I'm actually just gonna place one. Then down in my daylight phase I can craft, which I'm not gonna do this round, and then I'll resolve my decree. So the first thing I'll do is recruit. So I have to recruit in the yellow bunny clearing. So I will put a bird there building up my army. Then I have to move and with the with the bird symbol that acts as a wild in this game. And so that means I have to move out of any clearing to move. It's crazy. It is. It's wild. So I will actually move. I'm going to move four guys up into oh, this man. Come on, dude. fox clearing because I then have to battle in a clearing, which means I will battle be. in the fox clearing. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm of course, going there's no to, one else for you to battle, so I can't really get ill about that. Very true. Time. Very true. And I have to do it. Otherwise, I will go into turmoil. I'll explain that in just a second. So... In battle, it's really simple. You're gonna take these two dice and you're gonna roll them. The attacker takes the higher number naturally and the defender takes the lower number and you have to have the amount of characters match. Hold up, hold up. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a there's He tends effect. to forget this. <laughs> Booyakasha! Right. Ambush all over you. So John is gonna ambush, which means he's going to take two of my characters out of the battle. I get to deal with two hits to him. And they're automatically put out. Now I can also play an ambush card to block it to block it but i don't have that in my hand so and again this is wild so if i didn't have a wild card i'd have to have an ambush card in the fox clearing in order to make that ambush actually work but i do discard that it's gone so do your right. damage man. so i will go ahead and attack now with my leader ability i get to attack for one more than i normally would so oh my this happens every time Perfect. he is the king of rolling <laughs> against me i'm the worst yes. so what this means is i I hit John for two and he hits me for zero. Now again, I have to have two characters for that to take effect. And you do. There. I do. So you got just that. Marquita Cat is gonna get out of here. Do now. I have a okay oh, yeah. sorry. You you wanna explain your special ability? Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you there. My my one of my special abilities, and every character has a special ability, is I can actually play take a card that matches the clearing where I just got defeated and keep one of my guys in the game, but he has to come back or she, I don't know if whether they're he or she's um go, comes back to my I don't know what is that my fortress it's actually that's probably that is not the right word comment below if you want to do the right word the yeah i don't know <laughs> castle here i can't remember what it's called in the middle of this video <laughs> all right so john is gonna keep those i've resolved all of my decrees because i don't have anything in the build slot and then at the end of my turn i'm gonna score points if i have any of these unlocked which i don't yet so i'm going to just draw a card put that into my hand, and that is going to be the entire turn of the Iri Dynasty. All right, John, why don't you go ahead and take the Vagabond's turn? All righty, so let's do this. The Vagabond is really different than the other characters. Like, this is the only piece that you have. You can't get more warriors or whatever. He goes around and he's going to be able to like form alliances and develop relationships with these with all the other alliances or none of the other alliances. Um, help them war if you, they want to. Um, just do a whole lot of different really cool stuff. So let's just let's just show you how he works. The first thing that he does is he refreshes any items. Whoops, I don't have that in the right spot. He refreshes any items um, that are flipped over, which you'll see that after I finish this turn or as I'm taking this turn. Uh, so they're all, I'm all good right there, so we don't have to worry about that this turn. Then I go move over here to the daylight phase, or the, the second, before I move into the daylight phase, I can slip. And that means that I can go into another wood an area or I can slip into a clearing. And so he is the only character that's allowed to be in the forest. No one else can do that. So I'm going to slip right into the clearing and that doesn't count as a move. Um, then I don't have to flip any of my things over. Then I move to daylight phase where basically I can use as many of these as I want to. I just have to flip them over. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, one thing also that's unique about the Vagabond is uh, I'm going to flip this over, this torch over, which allows him to explore. No one else can explore these ruins. He's the only one that can do it. And when he does do it, he gets a victory point. And so that's really cool. So I'm going to explore and oh, I got another sword. Now this ruin goes off. I'll just toss it over there, Dean. Get out of here. Uh, which means that someone can build here now, which the spot before you wouldn't be able to do that. I'm going to place it into my trusty satchel and gain a victory point. 
Looky there. Looks like Marquis the Cat and Vagabond have the early you lead. Are destroying huh? me right now. Just one to nothing. <laughs> one to nothing. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, the second thing, let me look at my deck here. I'm going to do just that. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give aid to another player. So what that means is I first can flip over any of these. So I'm just going to flip over one of these swords and I'm going to become a friendly, at least for now, with Marquis de Cat, of which makes a are. lot of sense. <laughs> you are going to say that. As Marquis de Cat. <laughs> what that means is I give them a card that matches the clearing. And of course, this is a wild card, so I can do that. So I actually give Marquis de Cat this card. So there you go, Marquis de Cat. And in so doing, I take Marquis de Cat and I move them over right here. Um, they, uh, they were indifferent toward me. Now they are a little bit friendly. And I gain a victory point for that as well. Um, next time, if I want to increase it, I've got to aid twice. So I'd have to give them a couple cards or whatever. So we'll see if that relationship, if we can develop that relationship or if it goes south, who knows? <laughs> because if I can at any point attack Marquita Cat and they go hostile, and then anytime I kill any of Marquita Cat's folk, I get a victory point. So you never know. You never know what's going. You never know what's going to happen with the vagabond. <laughs> uh, the last thing I'm going to do is flip over this. Uh, boot so that I can move and I think I'm going to slip over here. I'm going to move on over. I'm not so, I'm sure. Excuse me. I can't do that. I'm going to move over to the clearing. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm done with my turn. And since I don't have any extra coins there, I get to draw one card. Boom. All right. Then we will move on to the Woodland Alliance. And the Woodland Alliance works quite a bit different, um, as do the, all of them do. But, but the Woodland Alliance doesn't start with anything on the board at all. And so what I need to do is put stuff out onto the board. And the first thing I can do in my bird song is to revolt. I'm not going to do that. Maybe we'll get to see that a little bit later. We'll see what happens. He doesn't have anything to revolt with. Correct. So I He is revolting. <laughs> But he doesn't have anything to revolt with at this point. Uh, look at these things. They're not revolting. I know. They look like, well, look at me. I'm just, I'm innocent and I'm, I'm, I'm overthrowing. <laughs> they're, they're so sweet. But anyway, what I have to do is I have to get sympathy tokens out onto the board. And that's going to be how I'll be able to get some of my more more of my pieces out there. So what I do is I have to match a card to a clearing and put a sympathy token out there. So what I'll do first is I will play this card, which I'm only looking at, whoops, this symbol, the mouse symbol, and that means I'm going to place a sympathy token out onto a mouse clearing, preferably one that's not my own. So I will take preferably want to take me down. This sympathy token and put it here. Now what that means for the characters in there is that it makes it more difficult for the for other characters to move into this clearing because yeah. they have to then pay me a card of that matches that clearing. Yeah, so if I want to take this guy and move him in here now I've got to pay Dino a card. Right. And I don't right. want to do that. Exactly. And so then I will place one more sympathy token because again that's how I get my victory points. I got a victory point there, buddy. Ah well, you know, I'll, that's the way I win games sometimes, so <laughs> give me the points you deserve. I'll play one more, which is going to be my fox card, and okay. that means I'm going to move mm, a sympathy another token victory point. because there's something fishy going on here and I need to I need to, to be proactive about what's going on in that clearing. The other the other part which hopefully you'll see I, I don't want him to do it but we will show you is that this makes you nervous because this is what prefaces a revolt. Right. So right. seeing that makes me go, "Ugh." But anyway, we'll see. And when see a what revolt happens. happens that means all characters are going to get out of there. Um, so I'm going to do that. Now, if you noticed I pulled this card these cards from what is called the supporter deck. This is a special deck only unique to the Woodland Alliance, and that's how I'm going to use those characters to put things out on the board. I also have a hand of cards, and so now that I've spread sympathy, I'm moving on to the daylight phase. I can craft, which I'm not going to do right now, and then I can mobilize, which means I can add cards to my supporter deck. And I'm actually going to take every card from oh, my hand, look at that. All in, baby. put that into my supporter deck so that 
I can use them on later turns to do my bidding. And then at that point, I can't do any I other actions. you were going to say, do my business. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do any more actions. Hopefully, I'll be able, to be able to explain that again a little bit later. So the next thing I'm going to do is draw a card into my hand, not my supporter deck. And that will be the end of the Woodland Alliance turn. So Sweet. that is all of there you the go. characters. Yeah, so at the end of the first round, let's take just a few moments, Dean, and just talk about the art and components of this game, what we think about it, what we like what we maybe don't like go for it i like the art and components <laughs> i really especially like the character meeples on here they're that, so cool they're they're simple but they have these just you know black faces on here the the you know the black outline of the face on there which i just think is so cool it's a neat little touch on there it makes them look uh, very unique and i love that i also do like the art on the board my concern when I first saw it was that it looks a little washed out, but it fits so well with this theme. I, it's awesome. I think it's great. We, we said yeah. it has a what kind of feel to it? I guess like maybe Schoolhouse Rock or something. It was yeah. something back in our youth right. uh, at school or something. I, I think, yeah, something like that. And it's it's just kind of quirky yes. and amazing. Like, oh my goodness, the box looks phenomenal. Um, did you see the... Uh, for the new expansion that's coming uh, out the art it's just it's so it's so good, so good. Uh, that's what one of the initial things and I went man that just looks really cool and um, I'm gonna say this and I've told Dean this like from 2018 my two favorite art in two favorite games art in games if I could articulate <laughs> this if I could art articulate, articulate. <laughs> You might have articulated something all over the board right then. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> it, uh, my two favorite were Everdell and Root. And this edges Everdell out just a little bit, but I love the art in Everdell just because of the kind of quirky nature and stuff of it. It's phenomenal. Love it. The components are very solid. The only issue I really had with components were some of the, on the die, they weren't really colored in all the way. Uh, with several of them like that you can't even see the three exactly so I mean I'm not going to complain too much about that but I thought that that was where they obviously spent good money on doing good production I don't know if they went cheap there or maybe it's got a bad apple I sure. don't know yeah the other thing I really like about this game and John mentioned this at the beginning but the the character boards are great because you have to play different factions you know if you play this multiple times you're going to want to check out the different factions yep. but because they play so differently there's a lot of information to know but the boards cover that information really well and I love that about it I think it, be, yeah. it makes it so much easier to play the other factions that you haven't played Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, overall, Dean and I, I think both give two enthusiastic thumbs up on the art and components. Yes. Very, very solid. Leader da Games did. Leader yep. Dames. Leader, Leader Dames. Games did a great job. So <laughs> yeah, so let's move on to round number two. And as we go through round number two now, we're going to kind of share with you what we like and maybe dislike about some of the factions. Let me go through my uh, final turn for this video of Marquis de Cap. Again, I'm going to start by placing a saw a saw, no, a wood oh, there we go. at each sawmill. So now I have two wood, so I could move over to this category and build another sawmill, but eh, who knows what I'm gonna do. Then I could craft, and oh, I drew a crafting card. Hey, who how convenient. Thunk it? How convenient, huh? <laughs> no one sets the decks. <laughs> All right, so because I have a, like I said, mentioned earlier, I'm gonna turn that around for y'all. I have a crafting table, I can, Look at the bottom. So in, on these cards, you don't pay attention to the top when you're crafting. You look at the bottom, and this says if I have this little mouse fella here, um, then I can craft this. And some crafting, I would say most crafts actually take a piece from here, and you're going to get victory points. Some give you um, bonuses. So like this one says, once in daylight, may look at another player's hand. So I... Come on. Yep, so I can now decide in daylight... The Vagabond, you should look at I'm the I'm gonna look at someone's hand. <laughs> so that was cool, so I was able to craft that, but I didn't get victory points because that one didn't have victory points that were uh, that went with that one. Then now I'm gonna do three more actions. And so for my actions this time is I will, again, I think I'm gonna start and build. This time I'm gonna take only one of these off to put a recruiter... Uh, uh, I might. If I uh, see, I'm afraid to do that because you'll destroy that. I will. I know. I know. I'm gonna put a recruit <laughs> there, and but I kind of wanted to fortify. But yeah, you'll you'll woodland alliance me. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. So that's my first move is to build. Then I'm gonna recruit again. So 
I'm going to just start trying to fortify what I have because he is going to take over some of what I have. It just there's no way All I'm going to hold the board. All of it. So I've got to figure out how to keep as much of it as possible, and I don't like that with him spreading sympathy. Um, so I'm, I'm I think I'm actually going to oh, see if I want to go here. Then I have to give him cards, which I don't really want to do either. Uh, man, I don't really like what I've got going on. I'm going to move this guy over here and just kind of get him headed in this uh, a general direction, and then. You could come down here, but that's okay. I'll fortify this way. You could come in that way. I think I'm going to actually take some of these guys and just move them here for now. That way I can get them out of that, that clearing. And All right, so that's my second move. i got to get them on around the board. And then for my third move, I am going to... Did I do... Wait, I battled? Oh, I did... No, I didn't. I already did all three of my moves. I recruited... I built and I marched. So the people out there in Meeple Town's going, you've done three already. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Sneak a little extra action in? Nice try. Yeah. So let me draw my card. And what do you think of Marquita Cat? I think the Marquita Cat is probably my least favorite of the factions, but that's not saying a lot. I, I really like all the factions and how they play differently. I agree. I, I like the fact that it is, uh, it, it's one of the more simple ones. And so usually when I'm teaching the game, I will put new players with Marquita Cat. Uh, I, I would say for the most part. Absolutely. Now, Marquis de Cat does become kind of difficult because you start off, like John mentioned, you're all over the board. And so you put this big target on your back and you're, you're needing to build your buildings. But as people are taking out some of your clearings where you have yeah. your, your little meeples in, it becomes a little more difficult for Marquis de Cat to, to kind of spread out and build more buildings. So I think it's easier to kind of stall out that engine that you that you start off so strong. 100%. I didn't give myself a victory point here. But yeah, you start off strong and it looks often like, oh man, Marquis de Cat, if you've never played this, they're going to run away with it. But no, it's it's because you have to have clearings to put your buildings. And look, I've already gotten all these. So he comes in and starts taking these down and I only have one or two more spots. I can only get a few more victory points. So um, I agree with Dean. For me, it's my least favorite. But I think a lot of it has to do with my personality and I like the underdog. So I don't like being the overlord of the of the forest. Like I would like to be the Irish Dynasty or or Woodland Alliance and kind of revolt against, you know, the capital. Right, right. Yeah. I secretly want to be Katniss. <laughs> Plus, um, look at the face, man. You just, looks, die, you just look so ignore mean. what I, I say. I'm moving on from that. Uh, it looks so mean. Yeah, you no, no. Be the mean character. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So, but <laughs> but they're fun, and he, like he said, first player, I'd either put them on this or um, the Irie Dynasty. Yeah. Uh, but but it's still a blast. Like if someone says, "Let's play Root," and let's play, and you're Marquita Cat, I'm going to say, "Sure, let's do this thing." Sure. Yeah. So why don't you go on with your next move? Huh? All right. So for the Irie Dynasty, I'm going to do the same sort of thing that I did last time. But again, remember that I need to place car a card or two into the decree so what i'll do is i'm actually going to put one into the build slot here mm. i'm going to put a fox card which means i'm going to have to build in a fox clearing that i have uh that that i have the majority in so then i'll move on to the daylight and i will just go ahead and resolve my decree again so the first thing i'll do is recruit in a bunny clearing that i have a roost which is only one clearing so i'll put this little bird there then i will move out of a location tell you what john i'm going to uh, here he comes you. again uh, and again, that's a again. wild. That's what I'm worried about a wild card, so I can move out of any location. So I'll move three dudes over there. Then I will need to battle, and I unfortunately for John, there. I have to battle on this one, right? Because there's nowhere else that I could battle. So I will ask John if he wants to ambush I, again. I, I promise you, I did not stack the deck here. Are you kidding? But I did. I literally <laughs> just. I did not. I literally just drew a wild ambush card. All right. Then are you gonna play it? You know what? Actually, I. No, I think this was the one that I used earlier, and I put it on top of the deck on accident. So <laughs> I'm going to toss that and draw a new card. I just realized, I'm like, that looks eerily, eerily, eerily. similar. So no. No, uh, no ambush. No ambush. All right, so that makes it simple. I'm just going to roll. And remember, and I dominate get, with my leader, I get an extra attack. I hit you once. That's true. I hit you two plus one is three, which I only needed... 
to that. So I'm going to take one of my guys off. And, uh, my birds. and again, if I didn't have any, you know, if I only had one guy in there and I was supposed to hit Dean for two, it would only count as one Correct. hit. So, right. yeah. But yeah, at least I did a little damage. That's like one of the first times. That's very true. That's so bad. All right. So that was the battle action that I took. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is build a roost in a fox territory. So I will take this little roost off of there, put it here. Now, before I move on to, well, let me go ahead and take my action, then I'll, I'll explain what turmoil is. So, in the evening, I'm going to score victory points that I have open on my board. Now I have one. And so, as long as I have victory points open on the board, I'll be able to get victory points every single round. But for this round, I'm just going to get one. So, if you can move me up on there. And then the last thing that I would do is draw a card into my hand. Now, if I was not able to take any of the one or any of the actions i would take up to what i could take and let's say i didn't have anyone in the fox clearing but i have to build in that clearing. or he had a roost there and he couldn't build oh right yes can't put two roosts in there. take that off there but right so if there is any way that i couldn't build or any of these actions then i'm going to go into turmoil and what that's going to do is is essentially reset my pre-programmed movements so what i would do is I would first be humiliated, so I would lose one. That's what it's called, humiliate. You're used to that. Right, right. Particularly when we play games <laughs> against one another. So then I would take I would take all of the bird cards out of my decree, and I would lose one victory point for each of those, which sounds kind of devastating, but, but for the Irie dynasty, having... Uh, having lots of roost out on the board is how you're going to get your points. So it's not necessarily the end of the world. So I would lose all those cards. I would lose a victory point for every bird card that's in there. And then I would lose my leader and have to put a new leader and start this board all over again. So it sounds like it could be bad, but not necessarily. It's not the, yeah, it's not the end of the world. But since we've gone ahead and started talking about the Irie dynasty, what do you think, Jeff? I like him. I like him. I wasn't sure. And I know you weren't because we've had this yeah. conversation. He definitely wasn't sure about the program nature of it. I, I wasn't quite sure, um, but I, I thought it would be kind of interesting. I do like games where you have to think a few steps ahead and you absolutely have to with these guys because you have to think he's just got that built there but he's got to think well how can i now build a roost next turn right. so you, you you don't yeah so and he could he can come over here and it, he's probably would take me down and take that perfect he did a that's a great job or come up here and, and do the same thing um so I, I i do really like that it's fun it's it, it's really simple Right, because you just you got your decree and then you then you carry out the decree, but it doesn't mean it's simple decisions. But it's it, it's it's pretty simple and straightforward, which is another reason why I I could recommend this to a first time player. I would pick this over it, um, but that's not too bad. But overall, it's it's fun when you get going. You just got to get going. When right. you get going right. with them, it they're hard to stop. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Now, the Marquis de Cat, their their strength is in their or the the strength you need to play to is building up big defenses because you already control so much of the board. The Irie Dynasty starts off in one corner, yeah. and so you really have to be aggressive. And so the the only the only reluctancy that I would have to getting a new player playing this isn't the the difficulty of playing it. It's just encouraging them. You know, if they're not an aggressive player, they're not going going to do well because you have to get your roost out on the board and you have to be okay. Uh, you know, going into turmoil, and and for some people that might be a difficult problem. Like John mentioned, this was one that I was not excited about, and it's actually become one of my favorites. That's cool because it's it it, it is so much fun. It is it's simple. You're mostly just putting cards into your decree and then doing those actions. Now you can craft and other things like that in places that you have roost. Yeah, but uh, but it's it's simple. I really like it. Okay, so now to the Vagabond. Yes. All right. So we'll go back over here to the bird song, which I get to refresh three items and two per tee. So if I had more than three that were flipped over there, I would be able to at least go up to five if I wanted to. Now I can slip. So I could slip into the forest and get a hide away or move to another clearing, but I'm not because I want to do some actions right here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to again explore. So I'm going to flip over this. And let's see what we have here. All right, we got a repair hammer. I'm just tossing it everywhere. All right, so uh, I get to take that, and that's one of the cool things about, I need to take this off the board as well. I, just, I did a little, little uh, spitting on the board there too myself. Nice. 
Um, articulating. Uh, articulating on the board. All right, so I'm going to put this in my satchel, and that's, you know, again, one cool thing about this is now I'm getting more actions, which is what I, what I want to do. All right, so I do get a victory point for that. And that's my first move is to explore. My second move is going to be to quest, actually. I have a card here that has uh, two swords that I'm supposed to get, and my two swords are not flipped over. I've got them here in my satchel. I've got them, so now I'm going to exhaust them, and that means that I get to quest. Um, but also, I needed to flip over one in order to uh, quest. So I'm going to do that, and I have now two options. I get to draw two cards, or I get one victory point, point per orange quest card. So the quest cards all have different colors. There's blue quest cards and stuff like that. I believe there's blue quest cards. I can't even remember. Maybe it's yellow. It's yellow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I guess I was looking at your, your <laughs> thing there. Um, so in order to get them to stack on the victory points, they have to be the same color. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a victory point, I think. And then uh, for my last move, I'm going to just move again. I think I'm going to slide uh, down into this clearing over here in case he decided to revolt. Uh, of course, it wouldn't matter. I'm the Vagabond, but I'm, I'm just going to come down here and maybe become a friendly over here. So what do you think about the Vagabond? I like him. Yeah, I do too. I think the Vagabond is the most unique, uh, potentially the most difficult to play uh, because it is so unique. But I like it. I, I really, I probably my favorite thing is when you're any other character crafting cards drama card. and getting those tokens out onto your board really just means victory points. But when the Vagabond comes into play, then they use those tokens in order to be able to take their actions, which I, I think is very cool. I like it. Exactly. Whenever I aided Marquita Cat earlier, if uh, Marquita Cat would have had a crafted item, I would have actually gotten that item. So, yeah, it's just so cool because there's so... I mean, there's a lot of player interaction in this game, a ton, but it's so heavy with the Vagabond because you have these relationship tracker and I again, it can become hostile. I can keep increasing my relationship. And that's kind of what I'm mean, honestly, if I continue this, that's what I'm thinking about doing is really becoming friends. Uh, because then if I get down to over here, I become allied with them and I can attack with them and, and, and just do some, uh, some really cool stuff. So Vagabond would never give to a first time player. Um, it's not overwhelmingly complicated. It's just, there's a lot, a lot of going on, a lot of different choices right. that you can make, and you can. The cool thing is, is you can really make the vagabond whatever you want. Right. You know, he. I could just go. I could have gone over and explored more and become this explorer that was getting all these before I did anything, or I could become hostile towards everyone and just be attacking folks left and right. You know, I don't know. Fun, F super fun, fun times. Let's do woodland. All right. So the woodland alliance. I mentioned earlier that you can revolt. Oh, and I believe snap. I do. I haven't said awesome. I, ha I have an opportunity to revolt here. So not necessarily in the territory that I want to, but what I have to do is pay two cards of the same symbol as the clear. Oh, it's convenient that you had revolt. that. How about that? So I'm going to pay these two cards out of my supporter deck. And then with that, I'm going to revolt in this territory, this clearing. So what I do first is I spend those two those two cards, and then I remove all enemy pieces from there. Good thing I didn't add any more to it. I That's knew that true. was going to happen. Now, it could be worse because, you know, usually if you start to kind of build up a territory, you put a target on your back if you are if you have a sympathy token in that. So I but I could attack the sympathy token as well. Correct, right. You can take the sympathy token out yeah, by attacking. But then you could put it right back. Yep. So the first thing I do is, or second thing I did is, is remove the the characters from that territory. Then I'm going to put the base in this territory matching that clearing symbol. And this is when the cool stuff happens, where I'm going to get to put some cool for you. on the board. Yes. Not for me. The Woodland Alliance is, is pretty neat and unique, I think. Um, so I'm going to take my first meeple and I'm going to put it as a warrior out onto the board in that clearing. There we go. Let so the world can see. see. It. Then the eyes. I also get to take another one of the meeples and put it into the officer box, which in the evening is going to give me some actions if I want to take them. And then that's how I'm going to be able to put my put my people out on the board. And I'm actually, do I want to spread any sympathy as my second action? How about... Uh, how about... Uh, sure, why not? So I have a bird card here so i will spread some more sympathy out on the board 
Which so that so the dominance cards actually, um, even though we toss it off camera, they actually stay in play to where if someone else wants to, they can trade a card for those, which I think right. is really cool. Right, absolutely. So I'm just going to put a sympathy out there, which gives me a victory point. If you wouldn't mind moving the Woodland Alliance up, I kind of mind, but all right, but I'll do it. So then, in my daylight phase, I can take cards from my hand, and I will put that there and now in the evening phase this is a little bit different this time so I now have military operations because I have one officer in here now what this means is I can take one of the four actions listed in here based on how many officers that I have so in this case I only have one and so I'm going to take the recruit action which means I'm going to place a warrior out onto the board where I have a base mm. so I'm gonna to start to kind of build up a, a bit of a a bit of an army there yeah and then that's gonna be the end, like of, the end of my turn so I'll draw a card naturally and then I'll also be able to draw a card based on the little card symbol here because I have a base out on the board. So that is the end of the Woodland Alliance turn. It's the end of the Woodland Alliance. No, it is not. It's the beginning. I love that. They're my, <laughs> right now, they're my favorite. Um, that could change. The Vagabond's really cool, too. And I like Diary Dynasty. They're, they're all fun. But I love the thought of not having anything on the board and having that super underdog thing. And you can really build with them and... and, and and they can look uh, not threatening, right? And then all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh my gosh, they're going to win the game." Yeah. Uh, so, I, but they're not easy to play. I don't think they're easy to play. No, they're they're more difficult, maybe not than the vagabond, but they are kind of difficult to play. Now, John said they look non-threatening, which they do, but they're very threatening. Super threatening. So, if you allow them to continue to spread uh, spread sympathy throughout the board, they'll dominate. Yeah. So, what you have to do is you're going to have to attack in those clearings where they have sympathy tokens. Yep. The, and it's difficult because you have to pay a card to move into those territories, but it's so necessary because they have to pay a card to remove the sympathy token as right, well. So right. it's a lot of cards. Yeah, so you're gonna and they're not just remove those cards, but you're paying them to the Woodland Alliance yeah. player. And so that that becomes threatening I think you oh, know, absolutely they're, I think they're probably the most intimidating faction in in the base yeah. game and that's and the first time you start playing you're like oh yeah but then all of a sudden they build up and you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh right. yeah so I love them um, really fun stuff so let's go ahead and let's do our final thoughts and rating what do you think yes let's do it um, am amazing game uh, it, it root is everything that I hoped it would be I was actually afraid are you are you crying right now <laughs> <laughs> John gets a little emotional when talking about the Oh man, um, it was it, it really was like I when I get really hyped up about a game, a lot of times I'm disappointed. Yeah, even if it's a good game, like I'm a little disappointed. I have not been disappointed with Root. The factions playing so differently adds so much replayability to me. Um, I am a little worried though. I have, I mean, I've played it quite a bit but not a ton ton i am a little worried that the, the 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 factions some of them can be kind of one dimensional in how you're mainly scoring your points so after exploring them three four five games am i going to get a little bored that being said if i explored explored <laughs> explored four or five games of each of these that's a lot of plays yeah absolutely um i'm giving this nine out of ten i love this game i think it's fantastic this game is 45 dollars. it was hard to find for a while but now it's about 45 dollars to me, an absolute no-brainer if this looks like the type of game. Now, I think Dean has mentioned to me, and I'll probably let you talk about this, but like teaching it and stuff can be a bit of a bear. Mm -hmm. So I'll just use that to... Yeah, that, that would be one deterrent from, from this game is that the, the teaching is, is... It is. It can be difficult. Now, it's not a difficult game to play. And in fact, I, I think the boards are very clear on exactly what you need to do. There's a few... Uh, rules that you need to explain across the board for everybody to understand but in general you can jump into this uh quickly i guess you know especially okay if you've played one faction you can jump into the other factions easily i think and the game yeah. itself is not a heavy game i think it's I, I think anyone can play this game you know it's it's not that difficult but up front to learn this game and to potentially yeah. teach it, I think, is is pretty difficult. I mean, if you were sitting here with two people who had never played, you're going to have to teach them the rules of, like, the overarching rules. Then you're going to have to teach them their very own rules. It's like teaching three games. Right. And then some of the character, the factions, have rules that kind of 
uh, contradict, I wouldn't say, but the overarching rules, they, or they give a bonus. So like it, it, it can be, it can definitely be a challenge. And I say that earlier to say, if you don't like, if you want a game that's easy to teach and you guys just dive right in and this isn't a game for you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I would, I would totally agree with that. But that being said, you know, John mentioned earlier that this was a game that I was not excited about and I wasn't, maybe it was the hype. I don't know. Boy, oh boy, do I love this game. Woo, man, this is so much fun. I really, really enjoy it. Now, I'm going to give this an 8.5, which is a really high scoring, I think. But very, I mean, that's very high. It 8, is. 8.5 8. out of 10. 5 means I will high. not turn this game down. And in fact, I think about this game frequently when I'm not playing. You know, <laughs> thinking about the strategies that you want to play as the different factions. That's one of the signs of a good game. I think me. so, too. And, the, you know, I want to play it over and over again. My concern, why this game is not higher, is that the variability could potentially be lower. Now, there is an expansion already out for this. There's a Kickstarter for another expansion, which both of those introduce, I believe, two new characters. So you could have a total of eight characters playing in this game. So that bumps up the variability quite a bit, but I would say it could potentially get samey. That's why it's yeah. not higher. But why it's not lower is because I want to play all the factions even more than what I've already played them. And I just think this is a fantastic game. Want to play it more often than I do. Now, if you think that this game might be a little more complex for you, but you like the idea of you know the different factions and, and the area control in this game, I would really recommend a game like Small World that is on the lighter end, but you can get not the same feel. This is a super thematic <laughs> game, uh, but yeah. it's not exactly the same feel, but it does have some of those same characteristics that I think you might enjoy if you're looking for something a little bit lighter. Absolutely. And Dean and I want to do a, a good job. We're all about building um, strengthening community with yeah. board games and, and building relationships and stuff. So that's why we want to toss out, okay, maybe if this isn't for you, it looks a little complicated. Um, let me do something that could be simpler. Or maybe you think this is awesome, but you also would like a game for your family. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Small World's definitely been, um, I don't know like if if it would be if it's been a gateway game for me, but maybe after someone's played Catan or played a few other games, if they're interested in something that's take that's take that that's area control that you're going to go after some people don't like those types of games but um a lot of times there's guys that i get together with and they just they not play a lot of games and the idea of warring against each other is exciting maybe they even played risk back in the sure. day and they love small world mm -hmm. uh whenever i well, i almost every time i brought small world out in that scenario uh, the people have really enjoyed it and i do I, I still i still to this day really enjoy some small world yeah absolutely but for root john gives it a nine i give it an eight and a half we both really really enjoy this game and that's going to do it for root thanks for coming down to meepletown yeah. thanks for joining us and be sure to follow us on twitter at meepletown games and connect with us on the meepletown guild guild number 3407 at boardgamegeek.com and also subscribe to our podcast and youtube channel and until next time thanks for coming down to meepletown